Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Appreciate you guys. Really sorry about the technical difficulties, but hey, we never let technical difficulties stop us here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Might slow us down, but it's not going to stop us. Definitely feel free to give us a call in 516-418-5572, 516-418-5572. Really appreciate you joining us here. Tonight on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show, promise you it's going to be an outstanding show. We're going to get started in just a moment, but first we got to thank our wonderful sponsor, none other than the outstanding Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Make sure you don't forget to go ahead and visit my great friend Chef G's right here at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Then it's 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, that's quite all right. Feel free to check out any one of the four great flavors at flbbqsauce.com, flbbqsauce.com. Jeff G is doing big things. I saw where somebody bought like 10 packs of his Florida sand. He's got sand. He's got rub. Check it out, flbbqsauce.com back tonight all of the great music the first song you heard was none other sang by sam scola songs want to thank sam scola songs and his wife mary all of the music is contributed by sam scola songs you're going to hear a great song by sef g's by sam scola we're going to kick that off and then we're going to go ahead and start the show make sure you guys don't forget flbbqsauce.com let me go ahead and play that great song the Chef G's Florida Bark Sauce song for you guys right now. Counting for the variety, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. A natural flavor, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage. Classic taste for chicken steak chips. A hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce Serve on fish and vegetables Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce Chef G's Florida Barbecue 
barbecue sauce. Chef Cheese, Florida barbecue sauce. and addicting made it support group make sure you don't forget to check out that wonderful sauce at flbbqsauce.com again that's flbbqsauce.com can i go wrong honey mustard heat wave classic infusion florida sand and he also has rub there too check it out flbbqsauce.com again it's flbbqsauce.com we're going to kick off the show right now by bringing on an outstanding caller Definitely going to bring them on right now. Thank you so much. I'm going to do that right now. Hey, how you doing? Show right now by bringing on. Hi, I'm back. All right. So glad to hear from you. Right. Sorry about the technical yeah. difficulties. How you been? Hey, you're here. So it's, well, you're here. So, it's, you know, it, it counts. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I had to push the show back <laughs> to 10 o'clock. I noticed that there was no sound coming through and knew something was wrong. Yeah. Something was wrong with the blog talk. But that's okay. How you been? All right. You know, at least we're still here. And, yes. uh, well, two more games, and then the halfway point of the season for baseball is over. And the Yankees could sure use the break right now. Ugh. Horrible. Since, yeah. Uh, they... Over the last six weeks, they have the worst record in the league. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the Yankees um, getting lazy, lax a days ago. I see balls yeah. that are hitting the outfield and guys going to second base. <laughs> and the outfielder is just is just lackadaisical play. Um, I hope Aaron Boone makes it throughout the season, but I think the Yankees, I said it, and I think you said it too, it might be time for a change. I did say it, didn't I? You did, and I agreed with you. because yes, I did, and I think the prophecy is going to come true. Yeah, I just think um, – with that big of a payroll, that much talent, and the guys are just playing lazy. That's the thing. They're not playing uninspired football, uh, uninspired baseball. Yeah, of course, you got Mr. Asner prone himself. Yeah, and that doesn't help either. Yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it's just unfortunate, but hopefully they'll figure it out and <laughs> start doing a lot better. It's yeah. still time. In fact, let me update the fans on, on where they're at. I'm glad you brought that up. But, yeah, yeah, what do you think it is? It's more of a coaching thing than anything? I do. You know, I I mean, the players can't take all the blame or, or you know, maybe just poor management. Now, I just, you know, coaching, I think maybe uh, poor management might be a, a factor, too. Yeah, you're right about that. I just think, you know, you know, those days of the late, great George Steinbrenner are long behind us now. But they're yeah. they're not doing bad. They could turn it around. Only two games out uh, behind the Orioles. So there is time. Yeah, I know. But the Orioles is have been a very good team. You know, that's the thing. Who the the Orioles – the Orioles have turned around their, their organization the last few years and actually are very good, but the Yankees yeah. do have time to still get them. So they need to get their act together. They, uh, they do now because once August gets here, that's when you really got to step things up. No, you're right about that. So it's right there within, in front of them. They got to turn things around. They, they got to turn things around quickly. And if they could do that, I think they'll be in great shape. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. you know, now, you know, because you know, now that the um, season reached the halfway point, now you gotta start thinking about well, you know, gotta think about our roster. We gotta start thinking about you know, hopefully you're not gonna make the postseason. Uh, you know, so now the the heat is on. The uh, early stuff is over. Now it's time to really get serious. Once the All Star break is over, you know. Then, then it's really uh, getting down to, you know, crunch time. No, you're right about that. You know, it is it goes by fast. As soon as all sorts break is over, they have time, two games out, it's within reach. But you like you said, they gotta turn things around right now. Yes. 
and stop playing lackadaisical baseball. Well, you can't let a guy go to double on a, on a ball you're grounding no. in, in center field. No, it could be worse. It could be the White Sox. Oof. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's worse than that. Yeah, that's pretty bad. 27 wins, 68 losses. 27 wins, and we're in the middle of July. How do you like that? They're actually worse than the A's. You think they'll break the record? What is the record? 42 and 120. I think they'll break the record. I, I think they, they would have a little – they'd have to have, like, low 20s. I, I think mm. 13 more wins, then they're at 40. 15 more wins, they're at 42. So I don't think they'll break the record. What do you think? Yeah. The way they're going, at 27 wins in at July 12th, I think it's a very real possibility. Yeah, it is a possibility. I think there's enough baseball for them to get <laughs> – just got to get 15 more wins. That's it. <laughs> Between now and the end of the year, which is – let's see. Let's say you get three wins in July – about getting like seven, eight wins a, a month. Well, well no, a little probably, bit more than that. Well, you, you're below your average of that because you only average about three wins a month anyway. Oof. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah, I know. That's bad. But remember, remember, he who plays like a turn, acts like a turn, is probably a turn. <laughs> yeah, so... That's... What it's like. <laughs> That's 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 now, that's pretty bad. Thank you so much. Yeah, you get right now. I know, I know. You thought that com. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> that's that's right, pretty, pretty right. atrocious. But All for their right. sake, so I hope they don't break that record. Technical difficulties. I actually would feel I bad for them. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm push the show back. Yeah, you know, ten o'clock. I noticed that there was no sound coming through, and I think they get bailed out. I was on the blog talk. That's okay. How you been? All right. Mm. You know, at least you're still here. But and we'll yeah. see. Boy, we'll see. Thank you. I'm not giving up. TNT is not giving up. I'm trying to stay with the NBA. Yeah. I, got two, I got two words for you. So forget it. You're not getting it. You're not going to master the deal. Yeah. So, over the last six weeks, they have so you think, you think you uh, think base uh, basketball yeah, tonight is right. done? I mean, the Yankees um, – Getting lazy. Unfortunately, yeah. The NBA tonight. Yep. Yeah. Balls are hitting the outfield and yeah. guys going to second base. But, however, and, I mean, you're not really losing, you're not really losing just, anything. Like because, although TNT play. is not. But, well, look, NBC is going to get a great NBC deal. They're going to do season. the season. Games are going to do. I think the Yankees, I said it. I think over. you said it, too. They're going to do Tuesday night game. games and whatnot. ABC will do the same. So, really, we're not losing anything, depending on what you look at. I know, but you're losing the show. That's the point. Put on NBC. I don't know. I think I you think. No, they didn't. I I think that show it had a great run, and it's awesome what they were doing. I think it's hard to kind of redo that show and like have that type of success. It's very difficult when you have four people that get along really good and extremely successful, you know, they, they put the egos aside and got along great. Yeah. I just think, but I just I, think that's a rarity. I like that, what I like about though, is that now ABC is not going to overlap itself with the NHL and the NBA at the same time, which is what they've been doing, which as four people that not get really along really idea. good and not extremely really successful, so I'm glad that you know, they, they it back. They put the egos aside and got along great. I just think okay. I just think that's a rarity. So you're happy that they're not going to be overlapping, but sad that the show is pretty much going to be gone. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I mean, it it was a great run. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, I know how show business is. I know how life is. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but very few things last forever in life. Especially in Hollywood, 
you know, especially yeah. in, in a show in Hollywood. Yeah, and yeah. And they had a great run. They they really did. An outstanding show for many, many years. A lot of great, a lot of great shows. I know how life is, unfortunately. I had that this one myself. Yeah. Very few things <laughs> last forever in life. Especially you know, I've been like seven years on nationally, you know, and I didn't think it was like that. Much. Hollywood, and, yeah. and they had a great run. They they really did. I yeah, I mean, many, many years. you know, even looking the journey shows. here, I'm, let's see, yeah. March. I can't believe it's been four years, four years and a half now, and, and time seems to go fast, and you know. Yeah. I mean, okay, bro. No. We're not in we're not in the world. You know, they, they really you know, did. Yeah, did. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, know, even look at the journey know, here. I mean, the yeah. March. And, uh, it's been an amazing world. Uh, I can't believe it. Yeah, glory to God. I mean, you know, it's been growing and growing every year. And fantastic. And, you know, it, we'll get there. We're going to be blockbuster real soon. You never know. Well, I'm not, yeah, I'm not I mean, that young anymore, you know, so I'm not sure. I'm 54 now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Lord of God, I mean, you know, it's been growing and growing. You're never too late for that big break. Fantastic. Unless you're dead. No, it, we'll get there. Uh, yep. We're going to be blockbuster real soon. And thank yeah. God we're and living. Sunday is on Sunday. Is on Championship Sunday. And you got something cooking. I'm really curious. You have a show that you might do on Friday. Tell us about that. Yeah. You're never too late. All right. It's one, it's one time only, people. I am not switching to Friday's permanently. Let's get that straight right now, yep. okay? I'm not moving to Friday's Thank permanently. Thank God we're living. I have a one time thing because I have, a, because I have an event to do um, the next day. Yep. So, and you got time, cooking. I'm really curious. Same number on Friday. You have a show that you, you might do on Friday. Tell us about that. But it'll be Friday. And you got so, I'm really curious. You have a show that you might do on Friday. Tell us about that. Saturday show, it will just be four to six Friday, correct? Right, right. But not, but not permanent. Just the one time because he has an event. Just the one time. And I'm glad you brought that up because there is a possibility, folks, and I'll let you know, Tulu, that next Friday the time might change. I might, I'm might. i thinking about moving up the show only because I will be covering Cooperstown weekend. And the big thing about yeah, so I'll be there at the Hall of Fame, Cooperstown weekend, next weekend. And I'm glad you brought it up because I know that I will have access to indoor, like really solid internet up until nine o'clock. So depending on how the day goes on Friday, I'll kind of know early if I'll have to move up the show from maybe seven to nine or something like that. I will. I so I be on the lookout. For only for indoor next Friday. Really Just like you, it'll be a one-time thing where I'll be moving it up. There is a possibility so, I, may, I may have to move up the show. I will Friday, I will let you guys I'll know, though, if I'll have kind of probably early that Friday or as soon as I know. I, it's not for sure yet because I, will, I, I kind of have right. to play it by ear. I kind of have to play it by ear and see how, how things go on that, that Friday. Friday. Just like you, but I will let you guys know and... Right. Definitely be on the lookout. So Friday will be an adventurous day for both Lou and myself. 
go. <laughs> that's well, right. That's kind of probably early well, that Friday. Yeah, or and tomorrow, and tomorrow will be a big show, okay, too. So sure yet, I'm kidding a lot. I'm kind of glad people hope we call in. Because I've got a lot to come. here and see how, how things go on that yes. Friday. Make sure you guys do that. Be on the lookout on the Facebook page. will be the best bet for myself if the times do change. And also right. YouTube, that's right. Well, Type Friday. in the Enhanced Sports right. Show. Enhanced Sports right. Show. He will be on Friday, right. 4 and 6 p.m. next Friday. He will be on tomorrow, regular standard time, in 4 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. Phone number for Lou is 512-543-4662. And that's 512-543-4662. And definitely make sure you support Lou both Saturday and next Friday. Friday. You will be on tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Regular standard That's time. That's awesome. So, so it's going to be great. Phone number so I'm definitely looking forward to talking to you tomorrow, for sure. Okay, how's that? You're welcome. I appreciate you. You're always the you the man. And definitely make sure and before my phone dies out, I don't know. Good night. And next Friday. Good night. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. Have a great, great night and weekend. Oh. It's it's folks, so I'm glad that Lou definitely Lou brought that up. To to you tomorrow, I'm gonna go sure. ahead and okay. let you guys know. Just kind of be on the lookout for the Facebook page, Instagram page, because next Friday's show could more than likely be changed. I could keep it the same time, and I could move it up. I kind of have to play it by ear how got how things go. Lou brought that up. I know that I'll have access to their media room. I might be able to know, just kinda do the show there, right in Cooperstown, right in the Hall of Fame. There is a possibility. I always say go in there, be positive, and see where it goes. So I'll play it by ear. That is the goal. I'll play it by ear and see how things go. But I'm excited about it. You guys should be excited about it, too. We're going to have a fantastic Friday night show in Cooperstown. Again, next Friday, I'll be in Cooperstown. Next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I will be in Cooperstown. It's going to be an outstanding time, outstanding uh, opportunities. There will be a lot of events that I'll be able to attend. That public will not be there. It is the first time I'm covering Hall of Fame Friday. weekend, so it is going to be a different experience for me. Even though I kind of got the itinerary, there's going to be a lot more Hall of Famers, a lot of things going on, a lot more fans. It's going to be exciting. Opportunity challenge, but a great challenge nonetheless. So make sure you guys stay tuned in. Definitely to the Facebook page, Instagram page. The reason why I say Facebook is because, you know, what I love about Facebook is that you can post stuff up, even though I can edit stuff, not like kind of like an Instagram story. You have to actually oh, delete man. it, start all over. It's gonna be That's exciting. one of the things I got to give props to Facebook is that it makes it very user friendly for you to update sure information as it comes. Twitter is, Facebook you know, it, uh, you know, you have an hour to, to edit it as after you post it, then it's taking it down and putting it up. So not like kind of. I got to give props to Facebook for that, and I got to give props to another one of our outstanding sponsors here, definitely. You know what, folks, if you are in need of an opportunity for a home, whether you live in Texas, whether you live in Florida, guess what? CTC ME Mortgage can help you. That's right. CTC ME Mortgage can help you. Give call to a call to Kurt McRae. He's your guy. 346-527-7564. Again, that's 346-527-7564. Go ahead and make sure that you unlock the potential that you have by giving them a call because you can either call them or visit ctcmemortgage.com. There are some great things that Kurt McRae can do. He can help you refinance. He can help you get a home with not a lot of money down. He has a lot of different creative packages that he can help you with. He knows what he's doing. So without further ado, let me go ahead and show you. Home ownership begins with the mortgage. That's right. Your guide to cash out, refinance, and start here. And that is the man, CTC ME Mortgage. Kurt McCray is your man. Number again is 346-527-7564. 346-527-7564. Let's go ahead and play another wonderful Sam Scola song right now. I'm going to talk a lot about Sam Scola. He got something going, cooking on. 
that you guys need to know about. But without further ado, we're going to play another Sam Scola song for you right now on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. CTCME Mortgage Company. Make sure you check them out. CTCMEMortgage.com. Again, that phone number for Kurt McRae, 346-527-7564. Again, it's 346-527-7564. Really appreciate CTCME Mortgage being an outstanding sponsor here in the Allen Alfred Sportsbook Show. Make sure you guys give them a call. Check them out. So you can opportunity to have an opportunity to own a great home or refinance one. That is awesome. So yes, folks, we're going to continue on with the great show. So let me talk a little bit about, you know, Monty Kiffin. Going to go ahead and pay our respects to the late football coach, Monty Kiffin, here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, I definitely saw a lot of fantastic posts from, some of the players from Rondé Barber, definitely it was awesome to see that. And, you know, it's it's just one of those coaches that really not only helps you out and develops you, but he's one of those great people in life that you never forget. And Monty Kiffin is just a magnificent educator, knows how to talk to people, and is just um, – Really, really great to see such encouraging things by so many players. And definitely it's 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 sad that we have to have this talk. You know, it's it's never it's never I would say it's always it's always so final when you when you have a passing of you know, if it's just definitely great words from Ryan Barber, Dexter Jackson and let me read what the Tampa Bay Bucks had to say. Let me, uh, and it was actually posted on the Bucks, also shared by quite a few people. Dexter Jackson, Monty Kiffin was a beloved and iconic member of the Buccaneers family, and our entire organization mourns his loss today. As a coach, Monty was a true innovator who got the best out of his players and helped create one of the signature defenses of the early 2000s. His passion and energetic leadership style resonated with all his players, and he was a true, he was instrumental in our first Super Bowl win 
and the success of Hall of Famers such as Warren Sapp, Derek Brooks, John Lynch, and Rondé Barber. Off the field, Monty was a kind, gentle, and gracious, and always had a positive attitude. He was very special to the Buccaneers organization and our family. We sent our heartfelt condolences to his wife, Robin, son, Lane, daughter, Heidi, and the entire Kiffin family, the Glazer family. And we sent all those great words here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Prayers and condolences to the entire Buccaneer family, friends, organization, Lane Kiffin, Lane Kiffin, Monty Kiffin, entire family, all friends and family that are affected. So we're going to do a moment of silence now here on the Allen Alfred Spalsic Show in respect of late Monty Kiffin. So that moment of silence for the late, great Monty Kiffin. So we're going to go ahead and talk now about the SBs. For those who who missed it, um, definitely Serena Williams was the host. Yeah, she took an opportunity to take a dig <laughs> Harrison Butker, and man, that guy with that speech ain't gonna live it down. Whew. You know, a couple months later, it's still talking about it. But you know, I was at an event, the SPs that I would love to be at and cover for you guys here at the Allen Alpha Sports Week Show. I know we'll get that opportunity when the time is right. But I, I definitely did enjoy it. I did respect the fact that they did give, for the most part, I'll talk about some of them that were little head str- scratchers on the winners, but definitely props that they gave it to Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, for those who don't know, my opinion is the, is the number one quarterback here in the NFL. I think there's some great quarterbacks in the NFL, but he's a cut above everybody in the league. He's cut above because of his IQ. He knows how to handle the mental aspect of the job, you know, where, hey, when you're a quarterback, some guys will tip balls and they'll go for interceptions. Some guys won't be in the right place. Some guys will just drop easy passes. You float it right there. He knows how to handle the mental aspect of the game. He won the male athlete of the year. And the reason why is because, you know, he's a great quarterback. His, his legs, he moves, he's mobile. He's not the fastest guy, but he does enough to break free and give you those first downs that break the back of the defense. And he's done it time and time again, can play underneath pressure, has a great arm, you know. And again, there's guys in the league who have stronger arms, but he has the whole game working and he's mastered his craft. And that's why he's the number one quarterback in the league. And durable, plays a lot. So. It's not all it's not all just physical. It's mental too. He got it. You know, Terrence Bud Crawford, he was able to get box of the year. I definitely agree with that. Absolutely. I mean, the guy's sensational. Terrence Bud Crawford to me is the best boxer in the boxing game right now. You know, he's just he's just you can make an argument that you know, Usyk um, right there is is there, but I just think skill set, what he could do in the ring, his feet work, his offense. He got that old school plus the new school mix, and he's just sensational. And I think Terrence Bud Crawford is is powerful around the number one. I know he'll say Usyk, but I would say Usyk is heavyweight. You know, heavyweight he's number one, but definitely as far as any weight below that. I know that he doesn't – he's not in a light heavyweight, but I just think he's better than a lot of guys that are out there. And so props to that. Now here comes the controversial award and the award that was a head scratcher, and that was when they gave Prince Harry the Pat Tillman Award. And I know his, his mother disagreed with Mary Tillman, uh, disagreed with it when they made an announcement that – Prince Harry's going to get it. She felt as if there's people locally that deserved it more. It was a head scratcher for me because of the type of award you're giving. You're giving someone who, you know, usually that award is somebody who does a lot for the military or has actually been directly helping our military. I felt as if 
ESPN gave the award to him. Yes, he does have a nice foundation of what they do, but I felt as if it was a popularity contest and they gave him the award because of that. You know, him and his wife was able to make it there. And I think it was more of a popularity thing more than anything. He did accept it. But, you know, it was definitely a head scratcher. I, I, I agree with the, the criticism of that. I wish they would have given it to someone else. And if you wanted to give Prince Harry an award, give him something different. Find something else that would fit rather than that. I, I just think them just trying to justify it doesn't because he has a foundation. Yeah, it doesn't really hold much weight. It doesn't hold water as far as I'm concerned. But outside of that, it was it was really cool. You know, I thought it was a great event. Check it out, the SVs, ESPN. And for those who joined the show a little late, start a different time today because of technical difficulties. Started at 10 instead of 9.30. Make sure... Just wanted to let you guys know again that make sure you check the Facebook page, Instagram, and X for next Friday. More than likely, I will see if it'll be the same time. I, my instinct is telling me it's probably going to be earlier just because I kind of have to play how it goes. I know Friday will probably be more than likely the welcome reception. I'm going to see if I could attend that. If not, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I could do the show on site somewhere there at Cooperstown. I will definitely try to make that happen. If not, I will have it at the regular time and kind of go from there. But we'll play it by ear, see how it goes. So just keep on eye on the time. I definitely who will be who will be attending. I definitely. Uh, I definitely I got that list. I got <laughs> I got pretty much everything except for the walk reception. I, I pretty much know when that's gonna be, but we'll play that by ear. Anyway, there should be fifty six Hall of Famers, legends attending. And for those who don't know, it'll be Andre Adrian Beltre, Todd Helton. Jim Leland, those will be the ones um, accepting their their retirement. And I'm also going to mention to you, too, and Joe Maurer, of course. So it's going to be great. So those are going to congratulations to the four inductees. Again, that's Andrew, Adrian Beltre, Todd Helton, Joe Maurer, and Jim Leland. Let me give them a round of applause while I do anything. Let me make sure I give them their props. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding achievement. But 56 Hall of Famers are going to be there. I know you guys want to know about the big names. You know, it's going to be awesome. I have the list here. George Brett. I won't read all 56, but yes, Ken Griffey Jr. will be there. Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, David Ortiz, to name some. Fred McGriff, Sandy Koufax, Chipper Jones, Rod Carew, Dennis Eckersley, Raleigh Fingers, Pat Gillick, Tom Glavin, Goose Gossage, Vladimir Guerrero, Ricky Henderson, Trevor Hoffman, Fergie Jenkins. Yeah, it's going to be outstanding. I haven't read all of them off. Ozzy Smith, John Smoltz, Jim Tomei. So just to name a few, Barry Larkin, Juan Marshall, and Dave Winfield. Let me see here. Joe Torrey's going to be in the house too. Jim Tomei, so... 56, it was, you know, I, I did see there was one name that couldn't make it, and that was Tim Raines. He was, you know, something might have happened, you know, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be an awesome event. Gary Sheffield will be there signing autographs as well. I did see, I did share that post. Keep an eye out. You know, there'll be some guys who are, are knocking on the door. I said it before. I say it again. 
Gary Sheffield should be in there. He should be in the Hall of Fame. But the thing about the Hall of Fame, it is kind of dicey. You know, when they lump you together with guys who they feel as if had extracurricular help, unfortunately, it's one of those situations where, well, if I let you in, I got to let this guy, this guy, and this guy in, and this guy in. So before I can actually let you in, I got to let the guys who have the better numbers in who have question marks. So I'm sorry, we're not going to let any of you guys in. That's one of those situations where I feel as if Gary's lumped into that. I do feel as if his 500 home runs are legit. It's indicative of the type of player he was. The long career he's had, 22 seasons here in the major league. Outstanding player. Definitely I'm looking forward to seeing Gary. Uh, Gary's a great guy, too. Outstanding signer, too. So it's going to be awesome to see Gary Sheffield there for sure. I'm excited about that. And excited to see the fans. Excited to see the event. You know, uh, they're going to have a golf golfing. I'm going to be invited to that. I know that's not open to the public. There's a couple of other awards that I'm going to give you some behind the scenes stuff. So you guys, <laughs> you guys were in for a treat. And, you know, I just, I know people are going to ask me, but I'll just tell you now, I want you guys to get as many autographs as possible. I really do. I want everybody to be happy, whether you got to get them on the street, you got to get them coming and out. Yeah, it's pay for them, whatever it is. I hope you are happy. I hope I definitely have a magnificent time. I hope the Hall of Fame is having a magnificent time. Hall of Fame has a magnificent time. However, I cannot get an autograph for you guys. I cannot use my position in the media to get autographs for you guys. I want you to get it, but I cannot ask for you to get it. It is, unfortunately, something that's not allowed, just like it was before. Interesting thing is, you know, it is uh, it is not allowed. So that's just how it goes. And, you know, last time I went to the cover the East versus West game, it's an unwritten rule that you don't ask for autographs. I didn't ask for any. It actually wasn't labeled on the paper. This time it is. It could be because there's a lot more Hall of Famers around and also there's going to be more media. So I cannot help you when it comes to asking guys to give you the homie hookup with an autograph. Got to get it on your own there. Just want to give you guys that. It's going to be an outstanding weekend. Problems anyway. We're going to have outstanding time. I'm going to go ahead and talk about another great sponsor we have here. Then I'll dive into some UFL news here as well. Listen, guys, in order for me to go to Cooperstown, I have to travel. I have to travel. You guys need to travel too. Anytime you need to go ahead and take advantage of some great opportunities, whether it be a destination wedding, international destination, domestic, whether you're going to take a cruise, you want to go ahead and maybe go on a private island, guess what? Pushpin Adventures can help you. That's right. You want to go to a desert island, you want to do your own Jumanji thing, part two, that's right want to take a cruise and chill out for the holidays, Pushman Adventures can help you. That's right. Give Monique a call, 626-838-1006, 626-838-1006, pushmanadventures.com. Pushmanadventures.com is their website. And if you want more on that cruise, pushmanadventures.com backslash version. Make sure you guys give a call. They can do corporate events. They can do couples. They can do individuals. They can do groups. They specialize in that. Moni can help you. That is for sure. So definitely, that is Monique right there. She's there to help you. Pushman Adventures can do anything you need when it comes to travel destinations. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and play another great Sam Scola song. I got something special for you guys with Sam Scola coming up a bit later. But for now, let's go ahead and play that great Pushman Adventure song by Sam Scola. Yeah. 
Definitely. Thank you so much, Pushpin Adventures, for being an outstanding sponsor. Make sure you guys give Pushpin Adventures a big, big shout out and give them a call at 626-838-1006. 626-838-1006. And definitely don't forget their website, pushpinadventures.com. Again, it's pushpinadventures.com backslash virgin. If you want more specific details about that wonderful cruise, that's coming up real soon. Make sure you get on that cruise, guys. Make sure you support Pushpin Adventures. Thank you, Pushpin Adventures, for being an outstanding sponsor. And definitely, we're going to go ahead and continue on with the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show. I'm going to make sure you guys definitely look into something. I did want to talk about something real quick before I get into the UFL baseball-related kind of deep let me get into that topic but before i do that let me um before i get into that deep baseball topic let me just give you guys some information here on my great great friend sam scola songs let me pull this up here for you guys so yes the great thing is not only is sam scola songs the one who makes all the great music you can visit YouTube and Spotify. Also, the great thing about Sam Scola is that he let me know that his song collection, Volume 28, is being released today, today, Friday. So you can check that out on Spotify.com and YouTube as well. So Sam Scola's collection, number 28. Also on songtrader.com, songtrader.com, he has... 2005 songs loaded on songtrader.com. 2005 songs. That's right. On on Song Trader. That's S O N G T R A D R.com. Thank you so much, Sam Scola Songs and his wife, Mary. And also, if you want to reach Sam Scola directly, some customized or given that big contract, sing along with Sam at gmail.com. Again, at singalongwithsam at gmail.com. Really appreciate Sam Scola songs and all he does. I really love the fact that I hope they put it back on Trader where you can see and listen to his songs on on both Instagram and Facebook. I love that because you guys get to hear those great music and tunes when I shared stories. <laughs> Hopefully that comes back. But yes, I did want to talk about something real quick about Major League Baseball. It was something that David Justice had had said about the decline in the African-American baseball players here in the U.S. He did mention a very good point that there is a rise now in Dominican and Latin players. And the fact that Major League Baseball does support them by having facilities, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, so that it can flourish. I thought that was a very good point. But the other point is about having American baseball, black American baseball, like a stadium here and support here in the States. It feels as if they don't do it because they don't want to do it. I would have to respectfully disagree with that. There is a difference between supporting a baseball league, Dominican Republic, and also in Puerto Rico. First and foremost, the cost is a lot less. Uh, my wife is from Haiti. Haiti splits an island with the Dominican Republic. I've been to Haiti a lot. I've been to the Dominican Republic a lot. The cost is a lot lower. If you take example, you take a million dollars or two million dollars, it's going to go a lot further in the Dominican Republic. That will probably be enough to build a really nice stadium. Not only that, the maintenance will be a lot less because the cost and wages, insurance and all that, taxes, fees are going to be a lot less. And culturally, I feel as if Spanish, Dominican, Latin players, they prioritize baseball a lot more than they do here in the States. You give them a facility, you put it in the right place, they're going to honor and treat it like it's gold. That's more the fabric of the culture in Latin baseball players. Not to say that you can't teach black players here. Of course you can. But I feel like with a lot of the African-American players here, 
you have you're at a disadvantage when it comes to baseball. A lot of them are into football and basketball. And the reason being is because, you know, you can actually get drafted, which I'm going to talk about the UFL draft in a minute. You can get drafted and start playing. There really is, there is no minor league system with basketball and in football until when Kobe came around, the late great Kobe, you could have been taken out of high school and start playing the NBA. If you were that great, Kobe was the last one to do it. They changed the rule. You have to be a year, I believe it is, or two in college. But outside of that, you can be in the NBA. You see Bronny James. He's going to be playing next to, to his father. Those other two sports, too. And this is the reason why it's hard for major, for football players to make it. The chance you make as, a, as an NFL football player is 1.4%. 1.4. There's just so many brothers playing to get in the NFL. And the NBA, baseball is low down the list. So the actual culture of prioritize baseball like they would in Latin American descent. They just don't. It's just not a priority. You know, when you deal with Latin culture, it's going to be baseball or soccer which would be football is what they call there. They don't value it here in the States. So same thing happens. If you have a facility here in the States, that facility might cost you $10, $15 million to build. And let's say you get it at a great place and an abandoned location. You get it for, let's say, $5 million, which is not really going to be most cases the way how much it's going to cost you. But let's just say you cost you, you got a great deal for the facility. That's wonderful, but you're going to have your expenses ongoing. It's going to be a lot more, a lot more insurance, a lot more higher wages. Nobody really wants to work minimum wage here. You know what the minimum wage is here. People don't even want to do that. The low shortage of, of workers unless you're paying really good money. Not only that, the maintenance, insurance, taxes, fees are going to be quadrupled. It's going to be a money pit for you for time to go because you might say, what about sponsors? Well, that's a good wish for all, but corporate sponsors are not easy to get nowadays. And not only that, corporate sponsors are more like, hey, they like to work on a situation with a proven product or service that's working, a.k.a. the NFL, no commodities that they have a track history of their dollars and what they can expect on return. Companies don't just sign checks now just for goodwill like they used to. So that will be an issue. Getting support, unfortunately, I hate to say it, as a person who's in a black and brown community, black and brown people don't support each other. And I'm, that's telling you from being in that situation several times. You ask a brother to just like your page. Doesn't cost you a penny an issue there. Eight, I would say eight, eighty percent, and I would even say as close as ninety percent, depending where you are, have the box of crab mentality. They want to pull you down. They don't want you to get up there. They want to try to pull you down. I deal with myself. They want to pull you down. So that's another issue. If you had a situation where you had a beautiful stadium. Not only are you not going to have brothers supporting each other with that stadium, those same 80, 90 percent are going to try to find a way they can take something from that stadium for them, meaning maybe shoplift the gift shop, steal some of the bats and balls so they can sell it. You know, they'll make it hard on you. I seen a post the other day, today in fact. I'm not going to mention a business name, but it's a really great, reputable business. It's located in, in South Florida. They do outstanding restorations of older vehicles, all professionally done, all legit, not like they're going to fix your car up and then a week later or two days later it's going to fall apart on you. They do professional work. Just the other day, someone tried to steal a little, stole the tools right in the front yard, and they had cameras. They didn't have – they had very good cameras, but it was dark. You didn't get a very good look at the person's face. I watched the video, stole the tools out of the truck, tried to steal the boat that was parked out front too. 
but unfortunately the boat was tied up or whatever. They could get the boat, but they were trying. That's what you're dealing with here in the States. Not that you won't deal with overseas, but I feel like Latin people respect baseball more. If you catch someone trying to steal on a baseball field, I believe people who see it, there'll be enough people that will, it'll police itself. Not here in the States. And it's going to cost you a lot more money if they do steal something and break something to get it repaired. So the cost, the maintenance, and the expense is going to be quadruple, if not more. It's not going to be really feasible for you. And this is from a guy who covers the UFL. I'm doing everything I can to promote the UFL. You not get as much family support as you should. Not enough people supporting like they should. And that's the UFL, a minor league football team that has professional football. It doesn't matter. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with your own, that sometimes is the bigger struggle than when you're dealing overseas with total strangers. That's just the reality of the situation. So, yes, in theory, what he's saying makes a lot of sense, but the reality, not so much. So if you build a facility here in the States and you want to help out African-American in the inner city, Unfortunately, I would say it's it's going to be doomed to fail. It's not. I don't see it really surviving too long. I just that's just the way it is. I think it's a great noble thing. I love what they do with the RBR program, but to actually build a facility, maintain it, not so. I I don't. I I wish I could say the other way, and I'm really a positive, optimistic guy, but I'm also realist. I'm a realist. You know, brothers don't like support, man. They just don't. What can I steal from this business? What can I take from it is what their mindset going to be. What can I rob? Hey, can I steal their their memorabilia and sell that? Can I break in and steal the gloves and I don't even play? Can I steal the helmets and can I use that sell on the street? That's what you're going to be dealing with. And it's going to be a re- repeat process over and over and over again. It's going to be doomed to fail. So I think it's it's easy to criticize. But if you're the one who's investing $5 million a year, and then that becomes another $5 million a year to upkeep, after a while, you're going to be like, yo, I'm not doing this anymore. It's just a sunk cost. Yeah, you might get half a million dollars in sponsors. You might get some good publicity. But at the end of the day, that sunk cost is going to keep on coming every year. And you're going to get frustrated that someone's breaking into the place, people quitting, they're not respecting the place. That's just what you're going to be dealing with, unfortunately. So that is the reason why I say having baseball stadium in an inner city will be tough here in the States. It would be easier to do it in Latin America or outside of the country. The culture is different. They respect it more. So until things change, and again, you're competing against baseball. Now, one positive is, I'll just leave you on this, a real positive note is if you are uh, an African-American or American baseball player, black American baseball player, whereas in NFL, you have a 1.4% chance of making it to the NFL, play baseball, you have a 15% chance. Much better odds than 1.4. And I would even say that 15% really jumped up to about 20 to 22% if you're very, very good. If you're very good, I think your chance is about 20, 22%. You might say, how come you're giving it an extra, you know, five to seven percent? Reason being because major league baseball needs you. When they need you and you're sort out more and you can play, you're gonna get more attention and more eyes on you. So hence being you don't have a fifty percent better chance, you're gonna probably be bumped up to about twenty to twenty two percent. That's what I'm looking at. There's players in the Major League Baseball right now, I'm not going to mention their names, that batting average are black American players that are just over 220, and I think the league is letting them continue to play, keep putting them out there, where in most places you might be sent on a bench or sent back to AAA. I think the reason why they're getting the homie hookup is because they are black American players. That's just, that's what I've I've observed myself. So, but if you can play, your chances are better playing baseball than they are football, statistically speaking. 15% is better than 1.4. Switching gears, we're going to talk about UFL news now. Let me go ahead and 
pull up some great things that are happening in UFL. Let me show it to you guys. So, yes, the showcase that I was telling you about kicked off in St. Louis. I'm sorry. Yes. Yep. St. Louis right there. And that's awesome. St. Louis, Missouri. This is one of the pictures there. It's another one of the showcases. The Battle Hawks. That's right. And yeah, so this is a great thing because you get a chance to try out, show your talent, go ahead and show your skills. You got to be in it to win it. And the next one is Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Houston, Orlando, and San Diego. I'm probably going to attend the Orlando, cover that one. I covered the XFL showcase last year. Now it's the UFL, and it was in Orlando. I don't see anything changing. I'm going to cover the UFL here in Orlando, too. Looking forward to that. So the UFL has a UFL college draft. That is Wednesday, July 17th. And this is the order of the draft. The showboats, since they were last place. Roughnecks, Renegades, actually third place, pretty good. Defenders, Battlehawks, Panthers, Brahmas, and Stallions. And, of course, the Brahmas and Stallions were the team in the championship game. So this is awesome opportunity, you know. I know it's a 1.4% chance, but better than 0% chance. You guys got to go out there and put in the work. Again, if you're going to show up to a showcase, make sure you get there early. Make sure you have your Gatorade. You have your energy drinks. You are a good sport. And kind of go from there. Do your best. So it's great that the UFL is doing these things. You know, it's it's great because, you know, baseball does have a minor league system. And I think sometimes that hurts with getting an African-American player to play because you have to go through the minor league system. But for the football, it's a great thing because it gives you another opportunity. It gives you another opportunity where if you don't have it, if you're not drafted right out of college, then your chances are a lot lower. So it's, it's great that you have now the UFL where you can showcase your talent. Things work itself out you have an opportunity and that's all you need is life is the one opportunity to get you there. Really surprised they haven't signed Hakeem Butler. I put up a post today. I'm really surprised they haven't signed him already. He was the NFL offensive player of the year, has some NFL experience, has height. You can't teach height. So if you're an NFL team, maybe you forgot, check out that post I put up on Instagram showing the press conference and the championship coach Wade Butler talked about Hakeem Butler. The fact that he thinks he's an NFL quality player. Wade Phillips would know that because he used to be an NFL coach. So definitely make sure you guys go ahead and grab Hakeem Butler while you can. He was at, he was at the, the free clinic that they had today too. So they have a lot of things going on there at the UFL. Make sure you guys subscribe to the the UFL. Keep you guys posted on news that I get, too, from the UFL. So, uh, uh, you know, definitely I'm excited. Uh, Definitely love the relationship that we're here at the Allen Alfred Sports Show and the UFL have. You know, the the great thing is they let me know on all the press, press releases. And I try to get them out to you guys whenever it's feasible, as fast as possible. So it's going to be awesome. So we're going to go ahead and now switch a little bit of gears and talk a little bit about boxing. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So we're going to talk boxing. Okay. So the question I posed here is how can you best avoid getting a decision robbery against you? And we all have seen plenty of robberies in boxing if you haven't watched robberies in boxing, you haven't watched boxing enough because there is some, <laughs> you know, and I kind of blame a lot of this, believe it or not, on Floyd Money Mayweather. I hate to say it like that, but the reason why I blame it is because a lot of the young guys, they just think that they could just have great defense, you know, do their shoulder roll, move up the way, dance around. And because Floyd did that great, 
that's all they want to do and hope that they get the win. Okay. The best way to avoid getting robbed is to initiate some offense. You are in a fight. You have to let the judges and people who are watching the fight, unless you have, I know that I'm not saying you to go right in front of your opponent, and get smashed and brawl. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you can have great defense, move out the way. But if you seen Floyd, when he would counter punch, he would throw a combination, at least a two or three punch combination, or he would always do that pop shot to the midsection or the overhand right. He would always give the illusion that he's trying to engage in contact. And if you want to be a great boxer, the squeaky oil gets the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Meaning, you can't just be a skilled boxer and be successful in boxing nowadays. You have to it's be able to market yourself. You have to put on a performance. Meaning, it's one thing to put on great defense. But you got to show that you're willing to engage. You're willing to throw a punch on the offensive side. Be aggressive. And, you know, throw a punch to hit them. They come in with you. They throw a couple of punches. You move off the way. You hit two or three combinations. You have to be part showman, part boxer. There has been quite a few boxers that I have actually seen and evaluated a talent and actually have very high skill. Like, I'll say the skill. Outstanding talent, but to their detriment, they were really nice, humble, soft-spoken type guys. And I'm not saying you got to be brash, but you have to be able to speak up a bit. You have to market yourself. They were humble to a fault, and it was hard to market them. When I watched the the, the Shockey fight, I knew he was going to get robbed on the first scorecard. Because the first scorecard was 116-112 Conseco. And I said, here it comes. Here comes that robbery, folks. Here. And I knew for the first card. The guy who read it is Mark Chinook. Mark Chinook and we are friends. And when I used to cover boxing a lot in top rank, he used to be in some of those press conferences that I was in. When Mark Chinook read that first score, 116-112 Conseco, I knew right Right off the crack of the bat, like I was hitting a 500-foot home run, it was gone. I knew he was going to get robbed from the first scorecard because 112, 116, 116, I'm sorry, 112 did not make any sense, Conseco. But the reason why is Conseco was the aggressor throughout the whole fight. The the opponent, Shockey, he had good defense, but it, the fight was so boring because all he did was defend, and he would throw a little one punch back. Nobody wants to see that. And not only that, yes, you got punished for being really boring and not aggressive, not initiating some contact. If you watch Floyd Mayweather, he has great defense, but he will do that punch, that straight punch to the midsection, which ain't really hurt nothing. But at least it gives the illusion you're trying to engage. Then he would do it at overhand to sucker you in to maybe try to engage. He would at least do certain things to make it appear that he's trying to engage, you understand, know in a fight. You are in a fight, by the way. You're not there just hanging out, making friends. You're in a fight. You have to sometimes initiate the contact. You can't just be moving out the way because you don't get points for just moving. And if you move out the way, you throw one little pop shot, okay, that ain't that ain't wowing nobody. I knew he was going to get robbed. So, yes, I do think Shockey – Caused a lot of his decision against them. Yes, you had 20 fights, but that fight was so boring and dry. You just moved all day. You hit him a little pop shot and then move all day. Again, trying to do like Floyd, trying to get the easy money. Shakur, I think is that's that's a recipe for disaster for him too because I feel like he's doing too much defense and not enough offense against a better component. Against a better opponent, he's gonna find himself in a lot of trouble with that recipe. I'm telling you right now. He hasn't got to a, an opponent that's right there or close to him or up there who really wants to win. That playing cute of just defense and just doing enough is going to catch you in trouble. You have to be part showman if you want to be a great boxer. Look at Jake Paul. Jake Paul 
doesn't have, you know, he's getting better for fight for fight. And he did start late in the game. And he's doing great. He's making big strides. But he's, you know, he's not one of the elite boxers. But my man is a great showman. You have to be part showman when you are boxing. Otherwise, you have to look at another profession. Because the quite spoken, humble, real spoken guys who don't do anything but just come in there and show their skill doesn't cut the mustard. And if you want to not get robbed, you got to initiate some some offense. You got to be a little bit more aggressive. Not saying being wild, just stand up there and let your guy hit you, but you got to look for opportunity for you to engage and hit him with a pop shot here and there and then move out the way. And then when you kind of rock, hit a combination, two, three punches. Don't just run away, little throw. Oh, I hit him. I clean him cleanly. You move out the way. I hit him cleanly. Yeah, you threw him a little pop shot. I knew he was going to get robbed on that first scorecard with Mark Chinook said 116, 112, Conseco. And I was like, here we go. Here goes that robbery. And I said, show you right. Because you were not aggressive enough. You put in a boring fight. He was put to sleep. I was falling asleep during that fight. And you paid the price. You got to be part showman, part boxer. You can't just be soft-spoken, want to move, move all day. Oh, I got great defense. Ask Ask Lomacheco when he lost his belt. He was doing all that gyrations against – he was doing that gyrations for six, seven rounds, then decided to fight after six, seven rounds, and it was too late. That's why he lost to Teofimo Lopez because he started his offense too late. You got to show the judges that you, when an opportunity presents itself and there's an opening, you're willing to go ahead and throw a couple of pop shots in there. Got to be a little more aggressive. You can't just wait for the, the, you know, for the person to come into you all the time. You move up the way. You throw a little pop shot. I knew he was gonna get robbed, and to me, he he does, he he earned that robbery by having a boring fight, just throwing little pop shots, moving out the way, you know. And it's hard for you to determine when you have the shoulder roll if you're kind of getting hit good or not, because especially when you're real dark. I'm sorry, it just you know, Floyd did initiate some offense. That's what he did do when he did box. He did at least give the illusion that he's trying to engage. You got to do a great job of that if you want to win boxing fights. Again, I see some guys who are really talented that you don't even know who they are. I know who they are because they're just too soft-spoken, too quiet, and they fight kind of like Shockey. They just move out the way, throw a little pop shot, hit you with a clean one, and it don't hurt nothing because you just throw one punch and you're not throwing a combination. That's how you end up getting that L. And that's what ended up happening in this case Saturday. He got the L. And again, you know, with Shakur, it was too big of a gap in Clark's talent. But if that talent level starts to rise and you kind of just do enough, like minimum wage to get enough so you get that win, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. You got to learn how to box, close out a fight when it's there, end the show, and that's it. The fans will be electric. The fans will be excited. And it's showing that you want to, you want to, you're all about business. If you see an opportunity to get a guy out, you get him out, and that's it. Fight's over, on to the next. Not let him hang around to decision time and then figure you're going to win on car, on scorecards. That's going to work some of the time, but it's going to be a recipe for disaster. You got to initiate some contact. You got to give the person the impression you're being aggressive enough to initiate the contact. 116, 112, I knew he was going to get smoked, and he got that robbery smoke. <laughs> you got to show that you in a fight. You in a fight. Remember, you in a fight. So that's how you stay yourself out of those robberies. Show that you want to engage or give the illusion you want to give. Do the, do the role. Otherwise, you're going to get that 116, 112. You're going to get those robberies. Having said that, remember, guys, next weekend, we are going to be in Cooperstown the entire weekend. The 
fun is on, the pressure's on, and this is what we do here at the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We rise to the occasion to see it. 56 Hall of Famers, even the people who are not Hall of Famers, the Gary Sheffields, the fans, looking forward to seeing the Hall of Fame again, Cooperstown. You know, I've seen it twice. I've spent a lot of time in it each time. It seems like it gets even better and better. I love going to the Hall of Fame. Really appreciate the National Baseball Hall of Fame for giving the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show full media access throughout the entire weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's going to be a lot going on and be ready to see a lot of posts. Again, I will more than likely move up Friday show. We will see when I get down there, play it by ear, see where I'm going to get very strong internet connection, see if I can do the show right inside the, you know, Cooperstown. We'll see. So it's going to be, it's going to be outstanding. That'll be great to set up a booth right there in the inside the Hall of Fame, you know, that'll be fantastic. I'd love to go live and do that. Keep you guys posted. Make sure you keep an eye out on the Facebook page. Keep an eye on Instagram. We're doing big things here on the Allen Office Sports Talk Show. And yes, y'all haters will not stop me. You know what I'm saying? I'm motivated. I'm driven. I don't care if you want to be one of those brothers who want to try to stop me. You're not going to stop Allen Alfred. Allen Alfred is driven by God. God gives me the strength. When God is for us, no man or woman can go against us. Thank God for all his blessings. Really appreciate him. Appreciate all that he's done and will be doing for Allen Alford and Allen Alford Sports Talk Show. Appreciate you guys for always being great, great listeners, great supporters of the Allen Alford Sports Talk Show. We're going to keep moving on here on the Allen Alford Sports Talk Show with some big things. And... Make sure that you guys tune in for Hall of Fame weekend. It's going to be outstanding. So it's going to be great. Keep keep your eyes open for more UFL news, NFL news, and a lot more here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I want to thank definitely our great callers. Let me make sure I let you guys know that. Thank you for all the callers. For today, Sam, Sam's, uh, definitely Sam Scola Songs. Thank our sponsors, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, CTC Emmy Mortgage, and also want to thank Pudding Adventures. So thank you, CTC, uh, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, CTC, as well as Pushpin Adventures for being outstanding sponsors. And want to thank all the fans, too. And don't forget to check out Sam Scola songs right there on YouTube and Spotify. Got that big collection there and song trader too. Man, I hope they put those songs back on Instagram and Facebook. I love that. When you share the story, you get to hear a quick peep of Scola songs. Nothing beats that. So speaking of sponsor, we're going to close the show with none other and our outstanding, delicious Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Make sure you guys go ahead and visit Chef G's right there in beautiful Tampa, Florida, 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And that's 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Or you can visit him at flbbqsauce.com, FL bbqsauce.com we're going to go ahead and play the Sam Scola Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song right now Counting for variety Chef G's Florida Counting for variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage. It's a 
cookout tree. Chef cheese, Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef cheese, Florida barbecue sauce. Chef cheese, Florida barbecue sauce. Chef cheese, Florida barbecue sauce. G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, so delicious and addicting, you may need support group. Make sure you don't forget to visit Chef G's right there at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida, 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida, or you can visit them at flbbqsauce.com, flbbqsauce.com. Don't forget that delicious sauce. Don't forget it, flbbqsauce.com. Thank you, Chef G's, and thank you. To all the great supporters of the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show. Make sure you guys don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show on Facebook. Follow on Instagram, Allen Alfred, and Twitter or X at Allen Alfred. Don't forget to subscribe also at the Allen Alfred right there on YouTube. Definitely appreciate you guys. So we're going to go ahead. Thank all our callers there. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. So we're going to go ahead and close out. Thank you again to Cola Songs. Thank you for watching another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Show. We're going to end the show with another great Sam Scola song, the end of the show song with Sam Scola. Appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. Be blessed. Be well. And definitely, till we see each other again, take care for now. Oh, 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 oh,